All right, you want to make some cool neon signs? This is how you are going to make this cool neon sign in particular. First, you're going to want to start out with a brand new scene. Go ahead and delete everything from it. You won't need it. After that, you're going to want to drag in your picture, whatever you are using as reference, size it up and scale it so that it looks correct. From there, you're going to want to add some text, rotate it, and then uh, come up with something snappy for your name. In this case, Rex's Texas Tavern. Yeah, that sounds good. So, then you're going to want to space it out however you want it. In this case, I actually decided that I didn't want a uh, tavern on the bottom, I wanted it on the side. Go over to text, and then you'll be able to scale it, change it, rearrange it however you want. I decided that I actually want tavern on the side, like I said. Go ahead and delete the floor, you won't need it. Then you're going to want to turn that to none, which is the fill. And then you're going to want to uh, change the depth to something that looks like a glass tube that could house neon, for example. So just play with that a little bit till you get something that you like, thickness that you enjoy. From there, we're going to uh, start making the material. So go ahead over to the material, create a new one. And we're going to turn this into an emission texture. And from there, pick the color that you want. Uh, I was going to go with blue, but I'm probably going to go with red. Yes, red looks good. So pick the color that you want. From there, turn the strength up to 25. I found that to be pretty neon-y. Uh, go over to Eevee. Make sure you turn on uh, ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, bloom, all that good stuff. And then you get something very neon-y. So from here, you're going to want to click your text again. Uh, we can go into the shading. We're going to duplicate that emission texture. Uh, we're going to add a mix node. Combine the two. Combine the two, there we go. Turn the one color down a little bit. Uh, make it just a little lighter from what you had before. Totally different hue works as well. Uh, then we're going to add a Fresnel node. Turn that into the factor, and from there we get a nice little outline of the darker colors, as you can see. Um, you can play with that, adjust it as you like, uh, but this is kind of the settings that I enjoyed the most for that. Yeah, from here we're going to duplicate that text, and uh, instead of sliding it back, you can actually go into the text options here, and then just move the offset so that it can get uh, thicker away from the previous text. From there, you're going to uh, extend it out. That way, it can uh, kind of encapsulate the entire thing and add a back to it. Uh, after that, we're going to go in and uh, make an entirely new material for it. So go ahead, make a new material. And that one's going to be kind of a dark, metallic-y material. And take your time making this, because after you make one, you can really well uh, just copy and paste it onto everything else that you do. Uh, yeah, so make it kind of a dark metal, turn the roughness down a little bit, that way it can get some reflectivity. But this is going to be kind of the metal casing that goes around your letters. So you're going to have to hit tab on those, uh, reassign the material, and then you can scoot it back a little bit. And uh, yeah, now you can see that your letters have a nice little box around them. And uh, it looks nice. From here, I'm going to add a new Bezier curve. You can attach that to the top letter. At least that's the way that I like to do it. Just kind of bring it up there, realign it, and then uh, attach the next one to the next letter, so on and so forth. Um, go ahead and just hit E to extrude it and go all the way down, making new little connections for this. This is going to be kind of a wire that runs between the letters and powers each of the uh, neon pieces. Uh, at the bottom, I like to make it kind of hang down a little bit. So you'll see me here dragging out that bottom uh, hook, which will, uh, again, kind of give it a, a droop, which I enjoy. I think that it gives a little life to it. Um, from here, we'll uh, give it some thickness, just in the Bezier curve controls. Move it back a little bit so it doesn't insect your letters. And then uh, give it a new material, just something black. I like to add 
uh, high roughness, a little bit of metallic, and then a clear coat over the top so that it gives some reflectivity to it uh, from the lights that it just kind of catches a lot easier in the light. Um, here you can actually see the R has a broken piece in the back, probably because of the offset or extrude features. Um, but I actually like it. It kind of gives the sign a little more life. It looks like someone, you know, jumped up and smacked the back of it and so it broke off. From here, you're going to head and uh, do the exact same thing to everything else. So you can see the E is kind of like the R in the tavern. But yeah, add your wires, thicken them up, add a new material, keep it all right. And uh, you can kind of play with composition a little bit. But here I want to show you the Bezier feature where you can outline practically anything you want and uh, make it, you know, look like a neon sign. So here I'm doing this horse and cowboy, which I think is a cool look. Um, it doesn't take too long if you've ever uh, masked anything out in Photoshop or uh, any Adobe product, really. It will be significantly faster than that because you only ever need to do it once. And yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, grand total, you just kind of use the handles, adjust as needed, and uh, for sake of time, I'm only going to do the outside of this uh, horse and uh, the outside of the cowboy. But again, you can do anything you want. You can do custom logos, custom horses, <laughs> really anything. Uh, for example, here is a meme that I made uh, to look exactly like a neon sign. And uh, you can see here, I will uh, switch into the other viewport and you'll be able to see I added kind of a brick texture onto the back uh, and a kind of a holder for the entire sign, which we'll get to. Um, I will show you how to do that in just a moment. But whenever you get done bezieing your curve, you can hide your background image and see your final product, which is... Uh, Pretty gratifying. I, I do enjoy that quite a lot. And it looks nice. So from here, you can uh, experiment a little more with composition, see what looks good, how you like it. Uh, I'm adding the metal pieces around the outside of the um, neon sign outline at this point. Again, kind of experimenting, just finding out what looks good. Um, here specifically is where I want to do something kind of new and experiment with something. So I wanted to give him a, uh, a rope, like a lasso, that spins around his head and is animated. So the way that I'm going to do that is set up a bezier curve that is attached kind of to his saddle and then make it into a lasso. Give it a neon texture. This one I am making blue so it looks a little better. From here, I'm going to duplicate it and then model three exactly the same over top of each other uh, so that the handle is always the same but the loop is moving. Uh, at this point, we're going to make uh, some adjustments to the texture where we are going to, after our mix shader, we are going to add another mix shader and then the other input, we are going to put a principled BSDF and we are going to give it kind of a uh, glass material where the reason that I did this instead of glass BSDF is just because I personally like the look of it, but turn down the roughness, crank up the transmission, crank up the clear coat, and I thought that that gave a very nice glass tube kind of effect. And so from here, uh, you can change the factor to zero and it'll be neon and the factor to 100 and it'll be glass. So then all you need to do is animate it. So crank out a couple keyframes, go over to your dope sheet, and you'll be able to change things uh, just depending on whether it is a zero or a one, it'll be on or off. So you wanna set your interpolation to constant, and then for each uh, individual lasso here, I had to create, I had to duplicate the material and make a new one because it was adjusting all at once. Uh, I also had to duplicate the handhold part of the lasso and bring it out front. That way it didn't turn off with the rest of the materials. Um, but yeah, whenever I finished it all and kind of cranked it out there, I, I only did it for 90 frames and then set it down to that being the length of it. This is the final product in which I got, where every 30 frames it changes. And I noticed that whenever it was off center of the frames per second, it actually looked a little better. So uh, I have 24 frames per second and 30 frames on each change. Uh, here I'm just getting a plane 
uh, subdividing it using the knife tool with K and cranking out the back, adding in a brick texture, setting them all to a very dark metallic color using edge loops to bring them out front, cutting off the front face, and from there I am able to set up a little backdrop for our neon sign. Parenting those all together so I can move them at once, play with the composition, see what looks best, and now I have kind of found my final product. So I'm adding some wires to it. Again, just thickening them up, adding the material so they kind of droop down behind it. I think it looks nice. And then I'm adding some support beams, which are going to be used to uh, keep the sign to the building. So we're attaching them down. I didn't like the look of that, so I decided to add two smaller ones and then one large one at the top, which has the entire tavern sign connected to it. From here, I'll just block out a nice little scene. I like the way that the light kind of cast itself from the neon sign, so I decided to add some extra lights just to give it uh, a little more structure so you guys can see the edges and such. Uh, here's another little trick. If you ever want an easy background, just set up a plane and add a light with like 10,000 brightness, and it'll look kind of like a city is lighting up your backdrop. So from here, I'm just framing the entire shot, and uh, yeah, that's how you create this. That is how you make the uh, nice neon sign. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Please like, share, subscribe for more tutorials in the future, and uh, that's my Instagram if you need it.